Baba's um Baba's message into it. Um, you know, it it really, really I felt in that funeral, well, I've attended quite a few, and this was a Zoom. It was really you could have feel the the love that reaching Barbara Ben wherever she was and recognizing how much it is when you're Baba's child. Um so many people uh, are there to give you that support, you know. Um, I, I, there's a senior brother who often speaks of a, when a Brahmin passes, how important it is to give the support, especially for the journey to come, you know, to give that support for the journey to come. And I am almost certain that Brother Ben really will go to, to bring about more Brahmins. You know, whichever home she goes, she will influence um, that. Um, because her passing was so suddenly, her illness was so suddenly. Um, but really the part is that Baba Yunus say, and Surya Bai and everyone, the seniors also talk, um, when Baba talks about um, your last moment, it can be any time. You know, it, it, it doesn't have to be at the end, we we'll come into destruction because so many have left. And really is being this ever ready. Um, more and more of our time is, is, is coming. I know Surya, but I made a statement um in this Sunday morning class when, when they had the chit chat and he was talking about things to come, you know, and we're seeing it now physically. And he says in 2025, um, there will be so much that is going to be happening. It means there's a, a, a upsurge in, in events that is going to be taking place. And really, right now is it's like little rehearsals, little rehearsals for that preparation. So it is important I recognize that you, you, you are important in your, your effort, but the support and being within the Brahmin family, because that in itself offers a, a level of protection as well um, when you're in a gathering. And I often recall, you know, when Baba... Or had said, you know, when he had called all the children um, together, and they did not know why, because they were going to have some obstacles with somebody coming to attack. And he says, you know, each each Brahmin um, has a speciality. We have all, but we are strong in some. And that each Brahmin um, offers a protection when there's a gathering at all of us. Um, and why always it is important really to be in the Brahmin gathering for that protection to be there. Apart from the lift, you know, the encouragement that happens as well, but the, the gathering is in itself a protection. Yeah. And thank you. I think Barbara Ben's funeral was the best funeral I've ever attended. Um, okay. and it was... Um, Usually, in the, I think in the UK, you can't have like the body open like that. It's got to be in a coffin. I think that that is a law. So it inevitably leads to a more closed experience. So to actually have the body like that in a, on a bed, trolley bed and uh, to see. And I thought the sisters there at the centre did such a great job of turning the funeral into service. So... I think there's something there with that soul that she was had a service in her heart. So then her death does service, her funeral does service. There's something in that. And I was incredibly impressed that 100 BKs and also relatives and friends gathered through Zoom, plus people in the room. Again, I mean, that's a huge funeral, really. And the uniqueness, of course, is that Zoom enables multinational attendance. So in this way, I think that uh, it was a great experience and a great example, and they, they did a great job with the service message to them. And as you're saying, it's uh, a couple of messages there for all of us uh, around this whole thing of thinking about our final moments as well. How would that be? Very gently is to give lots of classes on this. But, you know, we really do have to think about our final moment. I remember the, uh, so when we begin hearing the Morley's of 67, 68, 
it's one of the major narratives. Uh, this is how you sort of get to know the timings of these Murali, because he begins to talk about uh, like his design of death. And he says the best way to leave the body is just sitting and you have heart failure and you're just gone like that. So he begins to talk about these things and if that preparation is there in advance, um, then you're okay, you're not really dying. And so I think that she was an example for us. And what comes to mind is also this long period of donation of virtues. I think that that really stays with me about Barbara Ben and what everyone was sharing. So there, people will talk about her cheerfulness and her tolerance and her helpfulness. And you get this, you see, you, that what stays with people mostly it is the donation of virtue. And so it re-emphasizes the point. And um, I'm an Arsenal football player, and we have a very famous manager who managed the club for over 20 years. And his name was Arsene Wenger. And he wrote his um, book, his sort of auto autobiography and book. And Arsene Wenger says, there's only two times in your life that everyone loves, when you are born and when you die. <laughs> in the middle, it will be 50-50. You will never have everyone loving you. But when you're a baby, everyone loves you then. And also after you die, <laughs> everyone loves you. And, you know, I think there's a lot of truth in this. So the challenge is, can we actually inspire the love while we're alive? Because when we're born and when we die, that'll come. But can we do it in the middle? And I feel that Barbara Ben really did that. You know, that she had, because of that donation of virtue, and also, I don't think she was a soul who wanted that name and fame and regard that Baba's been talking about. But what happens is that people respect that. There's a there's an internal, even if it's unspoken, an unspoken respect of someone who you know is not shallow, is not central, that you know that they're, what they're doing is actually something bigger, for a bigger purpose. And I think that that all came across to me. So, yeah, I was really pleased uh, that I was able to attend and witness that. And I think it was appropriate that we had one or two people from the UK as a representation. Yes. I think so you're right to begin with that. I think your, your point about support is a really interesting one. And when we talk about eternity, and we're going to have yoga today, and we'll definitely send some thoughts and vibrations to the soul with Barbara Ben, and all of the Brahmins is gone. And also, it's the month of Shrad in Hinduism. So, in Shrad, I think it's four weeks or six weeks, something like that, of Shrad. Uh, the remembering of ancestors. And the Hindus will do a lot of worshipping at this time. For example, in the temples, um, they can make, like they can take the photo of their relative and keep it in the temple uh, during the evening ceremony. And then they can they do the arti, they'll do other things. And then they might give donations, especially on behalf of that soul, and feed everyone on behalf of that soul, and so on. So it's the time of year at the moment. So I think what you're saying is this understanding of support is there in different religions, in different traditions, that we always have a connection with ancestors and when people depart as soul. And we're thinking, how can we do it? But in fact, we don't have knowledge, so sort of doing it in our own way. But what Baba does to empower us is give us this power of yoga. And the power of yoga is something which is remarkable because we're being eternal, we're being this eternal soul, remembering the eternal father. But there's also, this is what you're describing, in it. there's something unique about the power of yoga in that it travels with the soul as well. You know? 
So it is an eternity about vibration as well. It, it also is not limited to the end of our life that goes with us and travels with us. And during COVID, we had that rehearsal. You know, you remember the early days, especially when so many were dying and the Brahmins were having yoga. And Didi Sudesh was talking a lot about this. And when Renjan Ben's uh, brother left the body, he commented how he left the body at a time when all the Brahmins were having yoga. And then Baba said in the message that actually he didn't have any struggle with leaving the body because he had all of these good wishes. So I think what you're saying is right, but I think it might even be more unlimited. Like it might just be for all souls that our job is to give them liberation from the experience of death. And every day I do have uh, yoga for about 10, about 10 minutes. So I call them the in-between souls, the old in-between souls that they're journeying. And maybe they're some because they're hanging on to something or some karmic account. They're not getting the next body quickly. So just pushing them along. Look, you know, just move on. And I think a soul would feel that like a ray of light, like our good wishes and yoga. It would be experienced by that soul, like some light guiding them. And this is why most commonly you get that feedback that we where people that have near-death experiences. They say, I went to the light. I had the experience of a tunnel. I was in a dark tunnel. There was light at the end of it. And I think most of that is yoga power and the good wishes, um, reaching souls. So I think Baba wants us to increase that. You want to come back? Yeah, um, yeah, and with Barbara Ben again is concerned, you know. Um, I do feel that probably uh, uh fetus was already prepared because um her, her illness was for about three weeks when she discovered she had this colon cancer, it was stage four. And um in the last week, this little sister Rani, really a powerful little soul, she went every day. To be with her and she was saying you know all oh, Barbara Ben was wasn't showing any sign of pain or anything like that while she had pain and all she kept asking Baba when are you preparing my baby body when are you preparing my baby body so she was ready to go she was ready to go she didn't have any struggle and and you know it is important for all of us not just Brahmins that at the time that we need to go um have we fully let go and want to go, which makes the journey even easier. So, you know, we're born and we know we have to die, but there's always still this remnants of fear because of the unknown. But Baba has told us, you know, we know. We know what it is to happen after, um, whether we, we go into the womb or whether we stay a little while. Depends on our karmas as well. And where time, you know, I always go back to time, and not that we make time to, to increase the effort, but the awareness of time um, tells us now there's there's no margin for 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 mistakes anymore. Um, you know, Baba talks about mistakes and not letting them repeat, but it is to be able to be have that constant constant awareness that um, we can leave any moment, and how do we want to leave? How do we want to leave? So yes, the the yoga, all the all the classes and everything is very important. That has helped me tremendously. But my my feeling now is that this yoga yoga is 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 what is needed, um, and to get rid of waste. You know, sometimes we go into this extension of thinking, but it's really full stop and yoga more than ever now is needed. And really now, and I know you do it is to be able to, to support the Brahmin family at this time um, in the job that has to be done, in the work that Baba wants us to do. So to be able to now send a lot of vibrations of, of strength and courage and love and determination to souls to help in this process, you know, because Brahmins are going through their own stuff. 
you know, a lot of Brahmins are going through their own stuff and um and whether we want to to believe it or not or admit it or not, there are a lot of depression within within souls as well. So it's to be able to send this love and support, you know, for Brahmins at this time as well. The whole world in general, but for Brahmins in particular, because of what is needed um, where their part is concerned. Shakti. Yeah, everything comes back to the three points. And my experience is growing more and more about this feeling of being eternal. So rather than thinking about it in the way, you see, when you're, what you're saying about time is not wrong, it is right. But as my experience, as my pilgrimage of remembrance continues to develop, my feeling is of going beyond the consciousness of time. So the stage of eternity is where you are the, there's only the three points. So I am a point, you are a point, and this drama is just, I'm just in the present moment because I put a full stop. Baba is the point. So really it's four points. Baba talks of three points, but it really is four points because the vision of soul consciousness, the other, there's a, uh, there's also a point. So the, if we remember these four points, then it really gives us that feeling of continuity. So what that feeling is like is it's going beyond that fear. Like you're saying, it's remarkable in the drama how our fetus is already prepared for two, three months. We don't even know. And we're being invoked by new parents. And then when it's time to go, some excuse happens here on this side. Uh, whether it's illness or accident or whatever happens. And the soul, soul must then fly. And we, we're just not in control of that. We all know that. So what we have here is this, just this going into that stage of enlightenment. That every, there's no such thing as death. And this is that stage of the golden age. Where Baba says to us, they don't even have a word for death. Yeah in the golden age because you wouldn't have a word for something you don't experience mm -hmm. you wouldn't have a word for something that's not a reality and so they if you think of the consciousness to which that is taking it it's going beyond temporality so a lot of our framing in body consciousness is about beginnings and ends. But the main lesson of Raj Yoga is eternity. And eternity means there's no beginning and no end to anything. And it's the continuity that I must live in. Now, what creates the fear of a different attachment? And the to be human is to be attacked. So it's, it's so normal for a human being to be attacked. We see that right through nature as well. But the samskars of this body are of fear. Um, this body is around survival. Yeah, it's, all, it's like ingrained within nature. So the body has two main samskars from nature. Survival. So that's linked with fear, and then to reproduce, which is linked with love. So what that says to us as children, you now have to become fully soul conscious. Because actually as a soul, you are not dependent on these things. But your body, because it wants to exist, is deceiving you and making you fear death. Your body is pulling you towards the sun. It's saying you must use the vices, otherwise you can't be happy. You must have fear, otherwise you won't survive. And by the same sweet children, you will survive. You, you don't need, you've been going through many bodies. You actually don't need the body. 
the body is the one that needs you. And this is why the body is deceiving you. Because in the copper and iron ages, it's the Tamu Pradhan, Rajo Pradhan, and Tamu Pradhan makes it. And so it has the sanskars of fear and lust. So you watch any nature documentary, this is what it is. It, like it runs right through nature, these two sanskars. And this body is part of nature. It's a gift from Mother Nature. We need the body, we know that. But as yogis, we have to constantly. And you look at all the different monks and nuns and sannyasis. This is what they've been trying to do. They all, they all are basically conquering the effect of the body, the, the pull of the body and the sense of it. But we've got Baba's help now. So this is the big difference. And we don't have to go into a jungle or into a cave. But because of Baba's help, we are challenged now to do this in our lives. So the uniqueness of Baba's religion uh, are the family people. Those of you who live with your family and your relatives, because no other religion has been able to create yogi who also live in the family of us. So Baba says, be pure, be yogi. And he, even if you're not in a family where many are working and have other worldly responsibilities, but Baba never says to us like all of that. He says, you've got to break your attachment internally and you've got to fulfill your responsibilities externally. So because the whole of this bodily consciousness and bodily sense, they're all based on attachment. Right? So the whole thing, since we're babies, all of that, what is mine, who is mine? So this is the thing. And of course, as children, we need them. If we don't get that as children, it's very damaging. But it's all part of Razan's ruling over us, you see? So we, the souls, are not masters in the copper and iron. The body is ruling over us in the copper and iron. Now, Baba says, with the power of knowledge and with the power of yoga, you have to become Raj Yogi, Raja is again, but to become the king of the game. You've been the subject of your body. And then our relations as well, what's happened? We become subject. We're just trying to please each other, really, isn't it? That's really what it is. Uh, we want others to please us, and others want us to please. So for 63 births, we're just trying to satisfy each other, we're going round and round. And what's the result? No one's satisfied. Right. No one is satisfied. But we just, uh, because it's fear, isn't it? Oh, if I don't satisfy them, what will they say? What will they say? So everything is fear that is linked with attachment. But what the three points or the four points they teach us is there are no attachments. You, they, it doesn't exist. Attachments don't exist. They are just your, this is just deception. And so you are eternally a soul. Uh, yes, brother. Sir. Yeah, excuse me, brother. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Divine Family. Uh, please, uh, in regard of the attachment to the body, I had, um, I knew that actually our uh, greatest attachment is to this body that this, this body is the first partner for the soul. And that if we conquer this attachment, that will, everything else will be easy, no? And, um, but I was thinking uh, three days ago about the way we are um, getting, how we treat the body once we leave it. And I was thinking, in Hinduism, we uh, um, burn the body. In in other countries, we put it into the earth. In other countries, we, I mean, in like, uh, I think near Russia or Mongol, they give it to nature to be eaten. 
and I was thinking and I, I saw how I had a vision how my body would be treated and really honestly that gave me some sorrow for the body is it uh, just like if he's not really dead he is as you said he's, he's still he would still be um, experiencing some you know what I mean like uh, I just like witnessing the story after I leave this body and I really felt something weird I, I never felt it before this this uh, how how the body will go either into fire or either into earth or either into i had some mercy like like a like a child that is going left is left and i don't know how to deal with these feelings or is it also a maya or can you please put some light on that our yeah. relationship when with the body when when we leave it yeah it's a good illustration it, it is your body uh, creating some maya in your mind because the body doesn't want to die this is what i mean it's this fear and mm. you see you, you what you are saying is right as well and most brahmins will think that way that i have to remove my attachment from the body but actually i don't think most brahmins have attachment to their body it's actually the body that mm. is hanging on to the soul as well, you see? And so it's like, if you imagine, it's like, uh, so Baba uses this um, phrase, if any of you have made something like halwa or other type of dishes like this, then, you know, you've got to, you're constantly stirring and stirring and mixing and mixing and moving and moving. And how you know that the dish is done is it's not sticking anymore to the tap. So you you have to keep moving, and then when it's ready, it's not sticking to the pan. So Bada says, this is our indication we're becoming karmatic, that when the body is no longer sticking to the soul, and there's this separation, this is how we know. Uh, but it has to be on both ends. So Again, like you're saying, this body will always try and convince us, you know, don't leave me. And, uh, you know, this is something which, you know, we need each other. But Baba is saying, you know, I am your companion. The body is not your companion. So we have this morally this week as well, is that um, Baba said, um, I think Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, I've come to take you all back home. This is why I'm here. And in the home, there's no body. And so the body also knows that you're going back with Baba. But Baba puts it very, very, I think it's, it's his sense of humor as well. He's making the audience laugh a little bit. So he says that, look, so many bodies are going to die. The golden age is going to get great fertilizer for the crops and everything. But, you know, I think it's a sense of humor, but it, what his point is, this body belongs to nature. Yeah. So actually, you know, what we are eating, like the soil, is the dead bodies of the past, right? Even if it's insect bodies or like other body, plant bodies, or that, that's what soil is. Um, so the whole of our nature is based on death, and manure, and like, like this is this is what nature is. So, like you're saying, I, I think then you've got the religious side of things, and we won't go so much into that, but like you're saying, different religions also have different perceptions, and certainly for Christians, the thought of burning the body just reminds them of hell. So that wouldn't, um, and, you know, maybe also the same for Muslims. So, you know, they would really, so there's also like some level of social or religious reaction when seeing different ways in which we treat the body. And I understand that. For the Hindus and the Buddhists, I don't think burial makes sense. Why, why would it? Because there's duality of the soul and body. But I think that others' perspective is just that actually the holy part is the soul. 
And when the soul is separate from the body, it's pure, it's peaceful, and it's divine. And it, uh, he says that this body is the snake, and the soul is the jewel in the forehead of the snake. And so this body, it will bite us if we let it. And we've got this codependency with it. And this has to change. As we have our yoga, we no longer must fulfill ourselves through the sense organ. We're learning to fulfill ourselves through Baba alone. And as that stage develops, we become more and more full. So naturally, there's a detachment to the body. So we must look after the body as a testing, but no longer the codependency that we had before. And then the second part, uh, I just will read your comment, Rupali, then, and then I just want to say one thing. Yes, it's a gross form of mind, right? So that links also with the, uh, because the body has its own intelligence. So you're right to call it, you know, like a gross form of mind. We know that you know, the body is very smart, isn't it? The way in which it heals itself and everything, how everything works. So definitely, we can call it an intelligence. In fact, I don't actually know all this now, but in the last 20 years, this human body has been reclassified by scientists. Like when I was at school, we were classified as mammal, as part of the mammal section of the animal kingdom. But now uh, they've discovered that more than 50% of our body is actually microbes, insects. They're made of in little insects. So actually, this they don't classify the human body as a mammal anymore, scientists. It's, we are we are like uh, part of the more than half of us is insects. There's little bacteria running everything in our body. Little tiny organisms. They're actually running everything in the body. They've got their own intelligence. But the other thing I wanted to talk on what Amita Ben was saying was, you see, sometimes we don't think of attachment in ways of thinking. You see, so. We think about attachments to the body, to people, to possessions. But the more subtle attachment is the way we think. And I was listening to Surya by his class yesterday, I was thinking about that as well, because most, most of his classes are about how should we think. A lot of Benny Jansky's classes uh, were also on this, about how should we be thinking. And like Surya Bhai was saying, um, that for example, um, that he gave the example of, I think it was an architect or some engineer or someone like that. And it was such a big project. He had the challenges of the mountain, the challenges of the ocean or the river or something like that. But I can't do this project. So Surya Bhai said, 21 days, think of them as your friends. And then you find the solution. So he's teaching him how to think, isn't he? But, but, but the problem is the problem. But it's the way we think. And you, you see, we have attachment to the way in which we think. And it can be so normal, we don't realize it's an attachment. And so a lot of this around fear is actually because we've got patterns of thinking in a certain way. And it's been programmed for centuries into us. So we've got all these memories of traumatic death and loss. And you know, what will I do without them? And what will I do? And where will I go? And who what will happen now? You know, there's so many thoughts that have become embedded in our thinking. And we are attached to that thing. And so, of course, human beings are human beings. They don't know how to deal with things. So the way in which human beings will think, of course, we're synthesis of us. But we as Brahmin, we actually have to have a look at the attachment to the way we think. Are we still thinking that way? Even if our head knows knowledge, have we really changed the mind and the way in which the mind thinks? And we only will know that when we are tested. Because we can think we're okay whenever there's no test paper, but it's only when the test paper comes. 
So like you're saying, there's a great importance to rehearsal. And um, we all have the big rehearsal of COVID. And what we know is that we have different things that can happen. We couldn't go to the centers. We couldn't meet anyone. But we still have the support of electricity and technology. So I would predict that the next rehearsal would be a pandemic where also we don't have the internet, things like that. And the Brahmins are going to need their connection with them better. So we, there are many more links where Baba talks about this viceless intellect and wireless connection. So uh, uh, now we've got many supports still. We can talk to each other, we can attend classes and so on. But we have to prepare ourselves where we just are alone. And it's got to be me and Bab. So that is saying that you're going to have to develop this stage from now. If you still have all of these reliances on many different things, many support, that's, that will be suit at that time. And so from now, let's just do that. I've been making efforts for a good 20 years now. Someone... Um, Message me about this in the week as well. So, you know, the, the, their main fear is like relatives dying. So sometimes we're not even afraid of our own death, but it can be the fear of someone else dying. And um, I was saying that I've spent a good 20 years working particularly on removing attachment and fear for random death because she's the person I live with the person where I would have the closest. So if one relationship is going to deceive me, it will be that one, right? Because, you know, I don't really have attachments. I don't, I don't have children or like So I don't really have attachments otherwise. But parents is the big one and children is the big one, really. Husband, wife, parents and children, right? That's mainly where our Karmic accounts are, but of course the attachments could be open, it depends on the person. But what I've been doing and I continue to do is internally I have a dialogue that this is my brother's fault. So I look at Ranjan Ben in three aspects of time. That in the past the soul was journeying through many bodies. In the future, the soul will continue to journey. Because our pattern of thinking is that this person, they need me and I need this person. Like we, we didn't exist before this person and they didn't exist before us. This is obviously nonsense. So I remind myself, I existed before I even knew anyone. I will exist after them. He will also be fine because if you think what is our pattern of thinking oh i hope they'll be okay where will they go what will they do and daddy Genki used to say that how some brahmins would ask Baba brahmin also about this in those days and you know, my relative when are they okay or they'll talk with the trans messenger or oh, can you give my wishes are they okay what are you doing and i got this determined thought that i should not think like this because for me, that is a lower level thinking. Why would I be worried about Ranjan Ben's fault? I, I insult her by worry. I must look at the soul from now with powerful vision. This is a master almighty authority soul. So all of the Brahmins from now, we, we, why would we worry about that? They're accumulating so much with Bhagavan. Um, they've got their account with Baba, they're holding Baba's hand, Baba is with them. Uh, there's really nothing to worry about. And very gently, he used to tell the story of when Daddy Vishra Kishore left his body in February, uh, March, I think it was March 12th, March 12th, when, when the events arrived here. I was just remembering you. I was saying that I'm not going to worry about when you die, I'm not worried about him. 
because um, Renjan Ben knows that she's not getting a funeral. I can tell you all this. I know, she, I, there'll be no funeral for Renjan Ben. We will just like that. And th this comes from this story. Let me tell you the story. So uh, that Brother, is the that, that was uh, actually using Trikal Darshi that Baba yeah. gave us. Right, right, right. But you have said it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, right, right. Exactly. So, you know, all of it is about eternity. So I think this is my main message today that all of these points to do with eternity. And so, um, that the Vishakisho was in. Relative terms, he was uh, Brahma Baba's older brother's son. So, uh, before knowledge, Brahma Baba was his uncle. But um, he had trained as a jeweler with Baba. So he was also like, Baba was always his guru, his teacher, his mentor. And uh, before knowledge as well, Brahma Baba trusted his brother. And when Shri Baba told Baba to surrender and create the Yajna, he called this brother to wind up all of his business affairs. So he always trusted this brother to do all of his work. And then um, he called this brother, Baba Vishra Kishore, into the Yajna in 1938, and said, Baba needs you. And his wife as well, Devi Santri, Baba named her Santru means tangerine. And the Baba said, you are so sweet like a tangerine. So he named her Daddy Tangerine. Daddy Santru. And um, so this couple, they were dynamics, like for the establishment of the Yajya. They were, Baba trusted them hundreds. And this brother was administering everything really in the Yajya. And then he um, he developed the prostate cancer and was ill in 67 and then he left the body in Mumbai in March 68. And Devi Jenki was in Pune running a center and she was coming and going in Mumbai and she was meeting Dada in the hospital as well. So when Mama had, um, had, had the final diagnosis, then Baba had said that Mama to be brought to Madhubai. And they had the funeral in Madhubai. So Daddy was expecting this also for Dada, because he was. But when she called, telephoned Brahmadabha, Brahmadabha, he was already in the stage of eternity. So he said, why would we have a funeral? For this brother. Just, just put the body in electricity. Uh, the child has earned his income, and we'll go with the income. So no, actually, Baba Brahma didn't have a funeral for this, for his right hand man. Um, but Daddy, Daddy did it all in Mumbai. And then, even for offering bhog in Madhuban, Baba said he was need to offer bhog. So Baba didn't even offer bhog for this Baba. But Daddy did it. Daddy uh, had it offered in Mumbai. But already, Brahma Baba was in this consciousness of eternity. And he's teaching us, why would we look at them like ordinary people? So this is why I've already told Renjan Ben in advance, she's not having a funeral, but after she goes into this, we will definitely all gather at some point and we will celebrate her life. We'll have a life celebration. But why would we have a funeral? Like because but, you know, it feels to me like it's old. Oh, this is what Brahma does. I think he was feeling. It's like, I am, like, that's like part of devotion. I also feel like. So, uh, why would we think like that? Why would we do that? Why would I worry about her? Because I know that it's already in the drama. Everything is going to be fine. Of course. And she's already accumulating her income. She will take it with her. And then, of course, afterwards as well, I will continue. But so I've already told her, I've already begun having yoga for her in advance for her next life. I remove all the obstacles from them. And then afterwards. So as Brahmins, we are always connected with each other. And all souls are all connected with each other. And we must continue to have yoga for each other all the time. 
and remove all of the obstacles. So in this period of shroud, we remember all of the breath, all of the relative souls, everyone. So it's the global Betty. So I think let's have uh, now 30 minutes yoga and I'll speak a commentary. But we're going to do it for all of the souls. So I'll speak it in that way. You want to just say something? Yeah. I saw Rupari then, yeah, when he talked about that uh, Selena is uh, doesn't care. <laughs> I love it. She agrees. Yeah. No, actually, Baba had a lot of love. He was, uh, because he was so worthy, and uh, then Daddy is saying that he held that powerful Prasaha, he had to be really worthy, and uh, his Nada was so, so worthy of the object. There was so much specialities and wisdom. Anyhow, when Baba, when uh, this brother was, uh, when Baba got the news that, he, uh, you know, brother is not there at all, Baba had given him so much the cast that he was saying, he didn't feel any pain. And I experienced that when I went to visit Mohini in New York, and I was in lot of pain because I felt that I fall down and my this arm, and it was so painful. When I came to Chicago, I was aware I had, so much pain, and we, as you know, when you have pain or when you have come in, somebody or the other would come and, uh, he, you know, not intentionally, with the, uh, you know, pass by or in, unintentionally, no cure, you know. Uh, so uh, we all experience that when some part of us, uh, we try to be careful, we either know if it's something or somebody, <laughs> and this is what was happening, and I was constantly oh. saying, anyway. Uh, uh, Baba and uh, I can't say I was worthy, but I said to Baba, I went to and I said that I wasn't well at all, at all. But uh, Baba gave me so much success that I slept first time so well, and uh, my pain has gone, so I thank them all. But uh, what I was saying is that they have love, Baba has love, and Baba gave him so much, you know. So, where you is in being worthy? Training and uh, you know, Baba has love, Baba will send us all. Mm -hmm. We attended the Thursday evening gold offering in New York, and that's what Brendan then referring to. And you'll hear morally where Baba talks about the searchlight, giving a searchlight to others. And um, that those are the morally of Baba Vitra Kishore Vilma. So Brahma Baba was waking up at two o'clock in the morning and having yoga specifically. So, so the lighthouse is where you're just in Baba's remembering and the light is just spreading everywhere. You're not remembering someone specifically. You're just remembering Baba and just spreading Baba's remembrance everywhere. The third light is where you remember someone or some situation or some service specifically. The third light is focused. So this Dada, he had Brahma Baba directly giving him the return for all his service, getting up at Amrath Vela and having yoga for this brother. Rupali Ben, you would, would you like to say something? Shanti, uh, it is really nice to see Ranjan Ben and you together. Um, I'm very happy. <laughs> um, it was a very nice program by Surya Bhai yesterday, um, talking about ABCD. And I had one of my colleagues join in, in, in on the call while I was in the office. So um, it was uh, very interesting to know how fear is also important. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm still I'm still absorbing. <laughs> yeah. well, well, great to have you yesterday and today as well. Great to see you. Yeah, nice. We are very. You know that I, I always feel I'm part of the Chicago path anyway. So, yes, uh, feel... <laughs> so great. But let's have yoga now. And we, we've got, you've set this theme up, all of you, very nicely. So uh, it's the month of Shrat. It's the time where we're remembering so many souls are remembering ancestors. But as yogis, we remember it all differently because we've got the vision of eternity. And so and we are taking Sakash and giving Sakash because 
we are those ancestors that others are remembering. And we are also remembering ancestors, right? Because who, who, the children of today are the elders of yesterday, right? That, that's who it is. That's what eternity means. So all of us receive satash, and all of us must give satash. So first of all, of course, let's just think of ourselves as a soul. All of Baba's knowledge is based on these four points. I am a soul, a point. But when I look into the point in the forehead, I can see that that point is very, very powerful. Every soul is a seed. And Baba says, look at the non-living seeds in the world. And those non-living seeds in the world, they create such a big tree. There's so much potential. And you soul, you have such a big part, especially the Brahmin soul. You've got such a huge part in the drama. So as you look at your point of light in the forehead, also look deeply inside and have a look at your wardrobe. And what's inside of your wardrobe? Did you think there's a wardrobe inside of the soul? There's a big wardrobe inside of the soul. And what's inside of your wardrobe? You have your 83 different bodies hanging there. Have a look at your body. You have eight sparkling golden deity bodies. You have 12 sparkling Silver Age deity bodies. And those bodies, they are also somewhat eternal bodies. They never fall ill, never untimely death. And there's just such a lightness and naturalness. Those 20 bodies, they don't burden the soul. They don't have the sun stars of fear. They don't have the sun stars of love. And then you got 21 bodies hanging there of the copper. And that's what it says that you became single crown in the copper. You lost your double crown of purity, but you kept your single crown and you became the royalty of the copper. So you would have been powerful warriors, powerful rulers, powerful queens and princesses. You got those bodies. You were part of great, you know, there are great civilizations. We see some, some ruins, we don't know all of the civilizations, but we know some of them. Egypt and other places, we know they were great. So you were part of civilizations at that time as well that were great and advanced. And you have 21 bodies in that copper age space. And then most of your bodies, they're Iron Age bodies, 42 of them. So, so many dresses hanging there. Because you are the traveling actor. And as the traveling actor, you carry your role with you. You carry these dresses. So these roles are recorded in the soul. And we know this is a drama of happiness and sorrow, victory and defeat, success and failure, praise and defamation. So in those 42 bodies, some of them, you just, they're like little babies, you had very short time. Some you had longer time. Some you were successful. Other births, you had more failures. You had, you've seen it all. You've had many, many mixed experiences. That's also part of the drama. Those who are the highest, they have to become the lowest as well. It's part of the drum. 
So as you look at the point, the seed in the center of your forehead, you can see the vast role that you play. In each of those roles, each of those costumes, it symbolizes the time period of this cycle. Sometimes long, sometimes shorter. But each of those costumes is linked to the time. And during that time, you've had so many thoughts, so many feelings, so many words, so many interactions, so much karma. That's all accumulated inside as well. And Baba was saying to us this morning that now you've got to remove all the burdens connected with those Iron Age birds and with those Copper Age birds. And as you do that, you, your stage will change from Tamo Prada to Tamo, Tamo to Raja. And then, once all those burdens are gone, you will just be experiencing your golden stage and your silver stage, your subtle stage and your subtle perang stage. So with each of those costumes, there's a burden still inside of us. So as we think about Baba, we're so happy that Baba's come to carry our burden. He's come to purify us. Baba says, I am your purifier. I am your guide. I am your liberator. So we look at Baba the point, and we, we can just see so much light. He is the seed of the world tree. And he is different to us. We got all the births inside of us. He doesn't have any birth down here like that. So that's not inside of him. He is beyond rebirth. But he has inside of him all of the knowledge, all of the power, all of the purity, all of the virtue. And he has the connection with every soul. We are connected with some souls, but we don't know most souls in the world. But Shibaba is the seed of the whole of the family tree. This is the rosary of Rudra. So as I look at Shibaba, I also begin to see the home. Baba says, this is your sweet home. And within the home, I also see the rosary of Rudra, which is the rosary of the family tree of all souls. Just like a Christmas tree has many lights in it, this is even more beautiful because I can see the vast and billions of lights, all the brother souls. But Shibaba is the one soul connected with everyone. He is the beloved of all. He is the God of all. He is the father of all. He is the Sat Guru of all. I, the Brahmin soul, am extra lacking because he is also my teacher. All souls don't get Shibaba as the teacher. But I get Shibaba as the father, the teacher, and the Sadhguru. But he is the father and the Sadhguru of all. So. He is connected with all. So as I connect my mind and heart with him, the seed, I also become unlimited. I become a root of the tree. I become connected with all so. And I can see how the light, like a network of light through this tree of souls, is also now 
connected with me. So I am connected with Baba. Baba is connected with everyone. So when I am connected with Baba, I am also connected with everyone. And I begin to feel the specialness of the close connection with the seed. I am a point. Baba is a point. And all my brother's souls are points. I look at my brother's souls and I can also see they got wardrobes inside of them. They all got different roles. Some have longer roles, some have shorter roles. They play, most of them, they play roles on the path of bhakti. But I am an all-round actor. I am the ancestor of all. So in bhakti, the devotees remember their ancestors. But in knowledge, it is I, the ancestor, that remember all of the devotees. This is the difference. In that thing, the devotees remember their ancestors. But in knowledge, I, the ancestor soul, connect with the feet. And I remember all the devotee stuff. I am now connected with all of the billion of souls. They are eternal. I am eternal. Our father is eternal. And this home is our eternal home. And I spread the light from the sea. I, I cascade it through the rosary of Rudra, the tree of souls. And as I connect with all my brother's souls, I can feel their light connecting with me. Each soul's light is slightly different. There's a different feeling about each soul. And they're appreciating receiving the light. And that's why their light is also reaching me. And I look at Shibaba, the power is like a powerful sun. Even though he's a point, his light is like a thousand suns. It is the light of purity, the light of knowledge the light of bliss, the light of power. And so I absorb and I cascade.
I look at Baba and I see the ocean of love. And the feeling I get from Baba is that the most important thing that souls need is God's love. For us Brahmins, we want God's knowledge as well. But most souls, they don't want God's knowledge. But everyone wants God's love. God's love is the Shiv Mantra. It is the thing that solves everything, purifies everything, transforms everything. So I keep my mind focused on the ocean of love, and I just allow myself to just become absorbed in Shiv Baba's love. And I'm aware that as I become absorbed, that love will spread through me and into the rest of the tree. As I experience Baba's love, I begin to realize how much love Baba has for all souls, all of his children. He regards them all to be precious. And as I look at all of Baba's children, it also tells me something about Baba. That it's such a variety of souls emerge from this seed, then this seed must also have many different shades, many different colors, many sides to his personality. Because this tree of souls has emerged from this seed. And therefore, all of this diversity and variety must originally be part of Shabbat. And I marvel at this connection between seed and tree, tree and fruit. One cannot be there without the other. We are eternal.
And as I look at Baba and his light spreading throughout the tree, his love reaching everyone, there's also one thought that he is conveying. And I must also convey that thought throughout the tree. And Baba's one thought at this time is, children, it's time to go home. So let me sit in this thought and convey this thought to all the brother soul so that subconsciously that thought gets planted inside of them. It will emerge at its own time. Together with that thought, we convey the feelings to all souls that they don't need to be afraid of death. The end of the Iron Age is the time of the great destruction. And that will open the gate to go back home. But Shibaba is the death of death. And he has come to teach us that we can exist as souls without a body. So you don't need to worry that you are going to end. Hey, my brother souls, you exist perfectly fine in this soul world. You don't need the body. You don't need relations. You don't need roles to be something. You are already something just by being yourself. Let go of the fear, my brother soul. And hold brother's hand and let's go back home. And as we think about the souls and home, we look across the vast expanse of nirvana, our sweet home. And I begin to feel like my home is also invoking me. Not only is Baba saying, let's go to the sweet home, it feels like my sweet home, Nirvana, is now also wanting to welcome me back. Thousands of years of not being in Nirvana. Now, let me go back. And it's as if our home is happy that we will be returning. And we as souls are rockets. In this world, we can't ex explore the universe because of the limitations of the body. But Nirvana as a soul, we can experience because we ourselves are a rocket. We can explore. So as an eternal soul, I can still do so much. So I don't need to be defined by the body and bodily relation. And keeping this image of Shabbat the seed 
the rosary of Rudra, the great tree that has emerged from my Baba the seed. And accepting my position as a root, as an ancestor. So, and thinking about the echoing throughout Nirvana of this thought that it's now time to come home. I keep this image in my mind and I will continue to return back to this several times today. Because this practice empowers the consciousness and the vision of eternity. Om Shanti. So I hope you all felt the silence coming down from Baba and the soul world and the silence also emerging from inside of your soul. And even those of you watching later on on the YouTube video, I hope that also that silence is experienced. Those of you who are here now, if anyone would like to share some experiences, please feel welcome to do so. Shanti. This brother, during the meditation, I felt so intense experience of bodilessness. And I could have thought this is actually meanings of to pray. It's to, because uh, the word to pray in Arab means tassel. It means arrive. And to arrive and actually what we did is that we arrived to our original state and original form it was like a journey of to arrive and this is uh, to arrive in our means to tussle it means tussle is also salat it means prayer so actually if every prayer was was in this way to, to go back, we would not be able to, to do any any vice, anything like that. So, yeah. So prayer is to be bodiless. This is the thought I had. That's really nice but thank you for me. Thank you. Om Shanti. Um, when we did the meditation the last time, um, I had I had expressed that every time that I try to concentrate on a particular soul, my meditation became disjointed and broken. But today, um, as you suggested, we serve the entire world and not concentrating on any individual soul. My meditation was so much more concentrated, not broken at all. And to be able to link with Baba became uh, more constant. And I could have felt that, you know, the energies, it just seemed like the energy was just flowing and it had to go wherever it needed to go. So for me, I realized that, that really serving in an unlimited way, it becomes a bit easier for me to do it in that way. I'm Shanti. Good point. 
Brother, can you repeat a little bit what Ranjan Ben said? Because sometimes it sounds a little yeah. muffled. And it, it yeah, yes, a... it's we cannot, we could not hear really. Thank you. She was uh, just talking about the. Uh, she was just saying that uh, she's recommending that we all reread today's Aviat signal point, and uh, she thinks that that is connected with what Andre Kaben was just saying, and also about this soul conscious vision was mentioned in that. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Benjamin. Ben. Uh, very, very enriching uh, experience. Um, I hope to revisit this again in the day, uh, like in the same way. Um, and uh, yeah, the heart, the soul says thank you. I'm great that you could attend the Taliban. And what you'll see is that from these yoga commentaries, it's basically this morning's morally, right? But basically. So, of course, there are different ways to practice yoga. But as we progress in our pilgrimage, mostly we must take the points of the morning's morally and then create like a commentary for ourselves in the day. Or practice for ourselves in the day. So, like today, we, we had all those points in the morally about the food and the tree. Maybe you haven't heard the morally yet, you will hear it. And um, it's, you know, it's there in a knowledge form, and we understand it in a knowledge form as well. But I hope that in these 30 minutes that we had the yoga, the meaning of that point suddenly changes. It becomes more deep and more profound when we actually experience. And this is what we must do in right yoga. We must not leave things as theory, but we must make things into experience. And as things become an experience, we unlock some attainments from Baba. And as we unlock these attainments from Baba, they get accumulated in us. So like today, if we, let's say, because we have to try and develop traffic control, we have to then have evening yoga. So this practice, we can definitely do eight times today, for sure. There's no one who couldn't do that. Even if we did it for short times in between, for just one minute, two minutes, three minutes. But let's say we will all do it for eight times today. Now, that eight, those eight times, you will be unlocking some attainments from Baba through this garden. That attainment gets stored inside of your soul. And then, without you even knowing, you will go somewhere. But because it's in your atmosphere, it's like in your aura, the attainment that you got, it just spreads in the room, wherever you are. And then other souls, they don't know, they're not having yoga with Baba, but they walk into your atmosphere and they just will get the touching of these attainments. So then they will just say, okay, oh, I needed the peace or they, they needed some idea in their mind. They go just oh, you know, suddenly all the problem just went away. So this is why we as Brahmins, we must unlock the attainment of the Murugita through yoga. So like you will experience that there was attainment through the Murugita point, but from, in terms of knowledge, that when you use the Murugita point for yoga, 
he unlocks different attainments. And now those attainments will help you and help us. Um, so is there a way to access just the commentary that you gave in the end? Um yeah. Sure. yeah, we can we can look in that. And you see, I'm in the process of um buying a bit better tech as well. So what I was thinking was once I got the better tech, mm -hmm. you can recordings of commentaries because the thing about commentaries is you really want very clear facts. And also, I think commentaries are better where it's just audio. Mm -hmm. And so wherever they are, they can just listen to it and remember Baba in their own way. So um, that is definitely my plan, and let's work towards that. So today's one will be just part of the video, but let then in the future yeah. record. And then Even in can... this video, like how I have seen they share Bab Dada's uh, just a video uh, in Avyakti Pariva. So even if this part of the video can be clipped and just shared in a way, I don't know. Yeah. I will, um, but you see where shorter clips is easier. So let me try and I can try and separate this video mm -hmm. and clip it up like you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. I can put it on the YouTube separately. But then actually longer term, we'll record separately some common things and then People could have eight or ten commentaries and they can just use them. I will write this one. I was thinking that this one about eternity is a very accessible for every soul. And I was thinking I was I will write it down and then share it with you, Brother Shilin, so that you can share it with everyone. Yeah, well, that sounds good. Yes, um, I definitely, I think, is our main message to everyone. It is the message of eternity. And uh, we, we sometimes when we're giving knowledge, we get lost in other things. But I feel if we just stay with this main message, what is that as conveying? Like you say, it's accessible for all souls. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Brother Shilin. So we child of my Baba. Thank you. Om Shanti Shalom Bhai. Can you can you hear me? It's very well, thank you. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, we had a discussion this morning during our morally review about the blessing. We were going deep into Baba's blessing because today Shdd mentioned that the first point Baba said that when you focus on your family souls or close souls. Uh, that's limited. And Sudesh Didi said that means you're creating a wall. So we weren't sure what that wall was she meant. She didn't expand because of the time constraint. She said she'll expand that on another day. So we were discussing our way of thinking, what would be the wall um, she mentioned? And we were thinking it could be because um, more into a bhakti thing, probably we begging or we asking for our family uh, rather than being a soul, giving a power to a soul. So when we give it to the entire tree, it becomes more um, consciousness of being oneness and also it remove the attachment because we're not attached to the few family souls. Um, and I remember Vedanti Ben mentioned when she came over, she said, who are you? You are world benefactors. Therefore, never ever uh, just focus on one soul. She said uh, every soul had to go through the drama and therefore we have to give Sakash to all the souls. So we should always see it as we are nearer to Baba and seeing every single soul. So I think um, your meditation really, really helped that questions and answered um, what unlimited versus limited means. So I'll forward it to the group because we had that question. We weren't sure what wall means. Um, if you have anything you can add to it, that'd be great. What uh, probably Sudesh Didi mean by you creating a wall. Baba also said, when you give Sagash to the entire tree, or, uh, then you get the reward back. Yeah. Rather, okay. rather than focusing on the family. So that would help if you can expand, then I can share this with you. Thank you, um, Shalin Bhai.
Yeah, my heart is. I was listening to this this morning. This by whole finance. You know, you have the consciousness of saying, oh, so and so is my son, daughter, uh, cousin, whoever. Then you are building a goal of limited. And uh, Baba says, we should have unlimited vision for everyone. Um, Raven, like uh, me and Selen, Selen is my son. If I have taken so many birds, we all have, so as the day before, we have, we have passed, uh, we don't know, we have so many mothers, fathers, cousins, everything. And if I just get stuck into this, we say that, oh, I just have to be sick for my son, children. And so this is also a very consciousness. And yes, it, uh, we are together because of our, the subject of our, Time to come and the past, like you have part, we each of us have part. And that's why Baba says, they all are Baba's children. You change your uh, attitude, your consciousness, that so is my son, like you say, attachment. So, what do they can explain? To have brotherly, like Baba says, that we, uh, they all are Baba's children, they all have inner. You know, like they all have purity. We say we all universal in it. The owner, like Baba awakened our in it. So awaken their in it and just leave it to give them the wishes. But to think that oh my son doesn't need my water, then it becomes a goal of body consciousness. And then what she was saying that Baba Sarasakas, Baba. Uh, vibrations, our good wishes, we don't reach at all because the uh, goal of body consciousness is there. But if you just have this unlimited vision and just uh, emerge that soul in front of Baba as my brother's soul, Baba's child, whatever, and then Baba knows the need of it for anyone. So they would receive it. But otherwise, there is this. We are building a, a limited boundary between Baba's account, Baba's and his right or legislation from Baba. And this is a, and this is why I said today uh, uh, signal, you know, a real signal and blessing. Leave it for Baba again in that Baba has also explained, clarified it. But this is what we saying and saying has this brother, brotherly reason. Yeah, she didn't have much time, but uh, she did explain. She said, if, if you have this body consciousness, and then you are building a wall. But you have unlimited, and he is, uh, our relatives at present are uh, because of our each other, the uh, karmic account of many births. But we forget that we have so many. But the areas of past so many births. So we are we should have unlimited vision. And uh, Baba said one of uh, teachers when he was meeting in one movie that uh, uh, you teachers, you know, you should have your unless you have unlimited attitude and vision, you cannot become the world benefactor. Because your good wishes won't reach it for anybody because you just think of your own center, your own um, nation, your own country. No, we are unlimited, have unlimited wishes. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Really, really helpful. Thank you, my Ben. Thank you, Sadat. Would anyone like to make any final comment? Om Shanti, Om Shanti, everyone. Um, one good morning. Um, the commentary today was um beyond what I ever comprehended. It was a it's simple, um, really deep, but there was a great teaching in there that I never heard before. It was something new for me, 
but and very profound and and it's something that that I resonated with really deeply. So it that is something Baba blessed you in such a way to give these lessons that you're giving and and um. Um, bringing out Baba's um, knowledge in such a way that it's so understandable that, um, you know, I don't know how else to put it, uh, but I feel very grateful to be here in your company and and obtain the, the, the lessons and the teachings in such simple way. Um, and today it was, it, it meant a lot. And and all the comment, all the sisters' um, feedback helped as well because it brought out more um about what you know how we should go about uh relating to souls and and helping in the world transformation and in baba's work so uh, thank you so much for what you do and for what happened what you did today because this will stay with me always it, it is like what i was looking for so I appreciate it very, very much. And thank you, Om Shanti. Well, thanks for sharing that. And then, um, see, as you're speaking, these chit chats and the wider WhatsApp group that formed, and just formed naturally, really, in the last few years, I think what connects us all is we really want to know Baba, really. As he is, what he is, we want to know the depths of things. So you wouldn't all be connecting like this? If he didn't. And um, there was one brother who reminded me of this uh, a couple of years ago. So when Betty Jenke was in London, maybe back 2018, something like that, at the end of, uh, I think it might have been a Raki celebration. And then afterwards, she was sort of doing her wheelchair dancing in those days. So everyone was gathering around the stage just to dance with daddy, clap with daddy, and enjoy that theme. And his brother reminded me that um, daddy had looked around the gathering and said, I'm looking for someone who really knows my Baba, both my Baba. And then she pointed at me and said, ah, he's the one. he knows, he knows my Baba. And I think this is really my hobby. And I think what connects all of us is you must also be the thing that you've got this desire to really, you've got a notion of Baba really deep. As he is, what he is. So it said to me that that is given a gift that I have to use. And this is that. So it's listening to the moral thing, but then when we actually think deeply about the morally and use it in yoga, that's my experience that we really get to know about it. So through the day, I'm practicing different morally points and I'm just getting better insight into who is Shri who is Brahma Baba, what are they like? And then when we convey that, um, I think it has a, a deeper meaning for brothers and sisters as well. So all of us, we must, but of course, it the experimentation of yoga. So we have yoga, but he also wants us to experiment with the yoga. And that's what this involves. So today the theme has been about experimenting with serving to the mind, really. Um, but it's also this wider topic of how we serve for our mind, it also benefits us. So we stay in unlimited eternal consciousness through staying, serving through the mind. And like uh, Sister was just remembering Vedanti Ben, but Vedanti Ben, I remember that as well, those classes. And her point was that for us, it's got to be like Amrit Vela the whole day or like. Um, it's got to be like it can't be third word, third Sunday once a month we do one hour for the world. That's obviously not enough. So as we stay in that experience as well, you know, all of you come back and share because you get to know Baba and get to know knowledge in a deeper way. But it can only be done through experimentation and experience. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, another thing is it's very important daily morning because it's a fresh food. Baba prepares fresh food for us every day. We need to care for our children healthy. We keep them healthy, fresh food every day, and we have food, etc. Very nice. So Murli Baba, like I said, he turned, uh, well, Brahma Baba has turned all this Taka Murli, Avyak Baba built us for practical. And so, you know, we turn and the Baba feeds us with pure butter, uh, you know, and that, uh, so what, we become healthy. And so every day to have Murli is like a eating fresh, healthy food to remain. Uh, healthy in mind, intellect, everything, and plus body that will affect body, and and so that and all. That's why Baba says, turn all the time, all four subjects. Baba, it's every day. And Baba says, you don't have all the subjects today, but here, Baba gives us the knowledge so we can have all four subjects. But in the morning, we understand the morning. With that we have yoga, because it's our consciousness is with Baba, who Baba is, and to remember Baba is yoga, what relationships, like in the morning, as children and teachers, during the day we can have different, different um, friends, sisters, you know, when we go to work, go to school, who we can call them. So we have different, different relationships with Baba, and have that dharma, Baba, keep Baba with you. And there are some also has an enduring service. Baba says, has the balance of yoga and remember and, and service. So don't just go on one, otherwise you balance, uh, one fit balance. So that's why it's important to have a relationship with Baba and do service. And keep the balance of Baba's remember and doing with children, helping me do. And so, we said, and then turn all the movie points as well at that time. Remember movie points, even of previous movies, previous, it's like setting your yoga, building up your yoga, like say, experience. All four subjects. Every day, Baba teaches us. They will come in our dana. They don't have to be separate. Huh? You understand? You can well, thank you, everyone. Another rich session. And also thanks to those of you who tune in afterwards. And uh, I know that many do that. So great to be with you all. So what we're going to do today, eight times, we're going to practice this meditation. Even if in between you can only do for one or two minutes, that's okay. And then in the evening, sit again for 30 minutes. And uh, probably the video will be with you by then, so you could even put the video back in, but you don't need to look, you can just listen. And uh, then experiment and see what new things you unlock through that experimentation. So have a great week, everyone. Um, Thank you. Empty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.